right here a monster. It says, Monster, Isla Sherry Blend from Catnap. And the ABV is somewhere in the 50s. We don't know exactly where. Well, let's get this. Uh, I forget what they call this stuff. It's this sticky saran wrap, cling wrap thing. I used to know the name of it, but uh, malt user's not around to remind me, so I'm just going to take this off here. Oh, I'm taking the label too. I need the label because for some reason it's not letting me put the label on this video. Okay, here we are. I'll hold on to this little label of his and use that when I'm uh, when I'm rendering the video. Okay, here we go with Catnap's monster. And this used to contain ah oh, Macaloni's Shawl Duel. which I sent him. And of which I have none left, I'm pretty sure. Seeing as this monster is in the 50s, uh, it might need some uh, water. Some water to make it... to make it work better. Uh, it's Isla and Sherry, so I should be getting a huge yeah a lot of Sherry and some Isla it's giving me a barbecue kind of impression Black cherries, maraschino cherries, smoke, bonfire, cherries on a bonfire. Kind of sweet. He probably used some uh, <clears throat> something that was aged or finished in pit or Jimenez. I'm only guessing. Maybe he'll put in the comments here what he put in it. Maybe he doesn't remember. Like, I wouldn't remember what I put in any of my Infinity bottles. It would just say, well, everything I've had in the last five years of this type. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Interesting. It's interesting how the Sherry and the smoke have married together to almost make for a co cohesive hole on the nose. <coughs> well, here goes. Oh, wow. It's caramel, espresso, and strength. A high alcohol. A lot of alcohol. It's taking away from some of the peat and some of the sherry, I'm sure. What I'm going to do is add a generous spoonful water 
and see what that does to it because it's kind of hot it's hot especially on the tongue And this is the first of three strong samples of the night. Okay. The cherry is toned down. I'm not nearly getting as much smoke as I was before. But the strength of this needed some water. Maybe I put a little much in. I don't know. We'll see. Now I'm getting on the nose. Some cherry once again, some caramel, some vanilla, some buns fire, a little bit of citrus. Would it be a lime citrus, a lemon citrus, an orange citrus? I'd call it an indistinct citrus. You can't decide what citrus to be. Well, okay. I dig a little deeper, I get a little bit more smoke. Mm. Okay. Espresso and caramel. Espresso, caramel, dark fruits. Maraschino cherry. This is quite nice with a spoon of water added to it. Still, small sips are a good thing. It's got some complexity to it. Still, I'm getting quite a bite on the tip of my tongue. Is that from the alcohol? Could be. Is that from the peat smoke? I don't know. Now on the rose, on the nose, <laughs> not on the rose, on the nose, rich, dark fruits, sherry, A little bit sweet. I don't know if it's all Oloroso or if there's some a mixture of Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez maturation and or finish that cat uh, whis whiskeys that catnap used to make this. For the for the, for the Isla whiskey part, there could be some Lafroig in there, some Port Charlotte, some Mark Begg. I don't know what all else. He calls it his monster. And yeah, you know, it's still 
strong sherry, peat, and a little bit of nip alcohol. This might be in the high 50s. Wow. A lot of flavor now that I added the water. The flavor is just, just hanging on, hanging on, hanging on. That peat and sherry marriage is just hanging on. Mmm. Mmm. Nice job, catnap. Very nice. This is good, powerful blend. It doesn't hold doesn't hold any punches. It just even with a spoon of water, it's potent. It's strong. I don't dare add any more because that might just drown it. Although it's probably not drownable, being in the high fifties. I really don't know. I don't know. I like it as it is. It's it's nice. It's it's enjoyable. Sipping whiskey. It's got all those... Oh, excuse me. If anyone's wondering, this is my first whiskey of the night, okay? I just happened to burp because I drank a lot of water to wash it down. Oh. But it is good. On the nose, once again, a bit of caramel and a nip of alcohol. It might still be in the 50s, even with that spoon of water that I added to it. And on the sides of the glass, there are some legs. Legs, and there are drops. Drops hanging on there. Big drops, small drops, and legs. Oh, I don't know if you can see those. Take a look. There are legs there. There are legs. So this could be in the 48 to 51 percent range at this point. Yeah, I come to think of it, it does have quite a viscous mouthfeel to it. Mm. And the peat smoke and the espresso and the dark fruits. Oh, I wonder what you put in this, but I, I have ideas. The question is, was it a blend of sherry cask whiskeys and Isla whiskeys? Or was it a blend of Isla whiskeys aged and or finished in sherry casks? Or a mixture of the two? Mm. I'm at the point where I'm just about convinced that he took a few sherry bombs and a few peated smoke bombs and blended those together. Just because after adding some water to it, I'm able to pick out the borderline between the two. Whereas if it was a blend of Isla whiskeys matured and or finished in sherry casks, it would be more of a cohesive whole. It would have a more Japanese character. But this, you can just, or I can just come to the point where I can pick the two apart I'm guessing again that it's all scotch. <sighs> so I'll say slanchava.
Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>